so far we learned different forces if you recall and if you watch the video once again replay the video and watch it we discussed about weight gravitational force we discussed about friction contact force we discussed about normal force another contact force so we discussed three types of forces weight friction normal now i am introducing another type of force called tension what is tension this is not the tension like you get tension when the exam examinations are happening this is the tension this is the one type of force acting on a certain type of objects and those are tension always acts on ropes and strings ropes and strings let me explain you it is a wall it's a fixed wall and there is a rope fixed to the wall it's a rope from this side i am pulling the wall towards left side i am pulling the rope as the rope is fixed to the wall now what happens when i apply the force the rope has to detached from the wall and it and it has to come towards me but initially it won't come and you feel that some another force is also acting opposite to your force and that force because of the rope and that force is tension so tension is a force always acts opposite to applied force remember the definition it is the force in strings and ropes acts opposite to applied force that is tension so if you increase f t also increases say if you if you increase f from 1 newton to 2 newton t also increases from 1 newton to 2 newton if you increase the force from 2 newton to 3 newton tension also increases from 2 newton to 3 newton still increasing the force at one point of time if you if you see that the rope breaks that means your f is become more than t in this situation only the rope breaks now we see some more examples and applications of this tension see there is a pulley it is called pulley frictionless pulley there is no friction and there is a rope over the pulley and this one side of the rope attached to a block of mass capital m and from another side there is a person standing and he is pulling the rope he is pulling the rope so when he is pulling the rope you know that he is applying the force in downward direction then the question is that how much amount of force f he has to apply to lift the block m towards up to know this again this is a rope this rope also having tension as the force is acting downward tension is acting upward so if you see only this part in this part force is acting downward tension is acting upward and if you see this part then this due to block mass m there is a weight acting downward and that weight is m into g and as this weight acting downward tension always acting upward so because of this part tension t equal to f and because of this part tension t equal to mg so if you combine these two relationship you understand that f equal to mg that means you have to apply the force which is equal to the weight of the block say mass equal to 2 kg then the amount of force you have to apply is 2 into 10 20 newton so the minimum force required to pull this block 
is 20 Newton. More than 20 Newton also you can apply, but minimum 20 Newton you have to apply because F equal to mg. Now see another uh, example for tension. This is a little complicated. Listen carefully. This is called Atwood machine. What is Atwood machine? Here again I am taking pulley. Or the pulley there is a ro rope and there is two blocks. There are two blocks. Two blocks. Say this block is M1. <coughs> this block is M2. And here M1 greater than M2. Because of that, M, when the M1 is going down, M2 is moving up. And this is always frictionless pulley. We are not considering the friction. This is a frictionless pulley. Right. Now here we have to find what is what is tension. What is tension in the room? First one. The second one. What is acceleration of the block? So these two things we have to find using Atwood machine and this is very useful for your competitive examinations too. So let me find these two values tension and acceleration. Okay. Before finding tension and acceleration when you take this type of uh, Atwood machine it's a system because it has two bodies. You divide into two parts and draw free body diagrams then it becomes very easy to find out the formulas for tension and acceleration. Let me try. See this one. <clears throat> Consider this rope connected to mass M1. So therefore, what I have done, what will do, I will take this part only. Rope connected to mass M1. Mass M1. Right? This part only are drawn here. Mass M1. Now, if you see, because of body, there is a weight acting downward. That is M1G. As the weight is acting downward, there is opposite force acting in the rope and in the rope means tension. So there are two forces, tension and M1G acting in this system. But if you see the system, actually M1 is moving downward or upward. Obviously M1 is greater than M2, M1 is moving downward. When the M1 is moving downward, it is having acceleration downward. So when, this, when it is having acceleration downward, then the four, Newton's second law says it has a force f equal to m1a because of acceleration in the mass m1 but this force this block do not get directly it got because of resultant of these two forces tension m1g now tell me which force is greater tension is greater m1g greater that you decide based on which direction it is moving as it's moving downward, downward force is greater than upward force. So therefore, the resultant force is M1G minus T. And this resultant force is nothing but equal to Newton's force, M1A. Therefore, M1A equal M1G minus T. This is equation 1. So this part is over. Now take this part. If you see this part, this part is moving up. So therefore, it has acceleration upward. Now take this part. So I am taking this part here, this mass M2, acceleration is upward as usual, it is also having mass M2, mass M2 and G acting downward, weight and as the weight is acting downward, tension is upward, T. So according to Newton's second law, force F equal to M2A, but this M2A is developed because of the resultant of these two forces. And here which force is greater? Obviously acceleration is upward, tension is greater than M2G. So therefore this is T minus M2G and this is equation 2. So we got two equations, this one and this one. And by solving this equation 1 and 2, you can find tension and acceleration. So let, let, let us resolve. So what we do? 
from this t equal to take t to this side m1 to other side so t equal to m1g minus m1a from this equation 1 from equation 2 t equal to take this side m2g plus m2a okay so then equate them m1g minus m1a equals to m2g plus m2a then take m1a to the other side it will become plus m1a plus m1a plus m2a is nothing but m1 plus m2 into a this m2g take this left hand side it will become minus m2g therefore m1 minus m2 into g implies i want acceleration so m1 minus m2 into g by take this to left hand side to become m1 plus m2 which is equals to a so this is the acceleration of the body so we have found acceleration a now we have to find tension t so what we do you have to substitute this acceleration a either in equation 2 or in equation 1 to find t so uh, I will take equation 1 so equation 1 implies see t equals to this is the formula I found m1g minus m1a now what we do m1g minus a na? if you take common m1 into g minus instead of a use this formula supply this formula here so m1 minus m2 into g by m1 plus m2 so what happens here if you do the lcm part this m1 plus m2 into g minus m1 minus m2 into g whole by m1 plus m2 so i'm writing the next step here the last step so m1g minus m1g will be cancelled m2g plus m2g become 2m2g here m1 is there by m1 plus m2 so implies t equal to 2 m1 m2g by m1 plus m2 this is the tension in the atwood machine